Good evening. This is the April 18th meeting of the Portsmouth City Council. I'm Joanne Grasso, Assistant Mayor. Mayor Sorrell is at home this evening. She's recovering from a bout with pneumonia. She's doing very well following doctor's orders and getting as much rest as possible. And I want to say that we all wish her well. We'll start Mayor. <laughs> Ms. Kelly with the roll call, please. Assistant Mayor Grasso? Here. Councilor Farini? Here. Councilor Marshawn? Here. Councilor Penelakis? Here. Councilor Hine? Here. Councilor Reynolds? Here. Councilor Whitehouse? Here. Councilor St. Laurent? Here. Thank you. Oh, I'd like to have uh, Councilor Hines, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? And next item would be the acceptance of the minutes of April 4th. So moved, Your Honor. Second. Any um, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Accepted. Uh, public comment session. The rules are, as you know, the three minutes. The uh, city attorney will let you know when your time is up. And in, at that moment, we would appreciate your, your taking your seat. The first gentleman is Tom Carroll, who would like to speak on the continued study of the scrap metal on Market Street. Thank you, Council. During the City Council meeting in January of this year, I brought to you a bucket of scrap metal I had collected on Market Street from the entrance of the port to the on and off ramps of Route 95. With that bucket of metal, I brought a sandwich baggie half filled with fibrous microparticles of scrap metal. I discussed the possibility of these fibrous particles making their way into downtown via moving traffic or windy days. I said that I would go into downtown and perform a study to determine if this fibrous scrap metal could be found in downtown. Recently, I conducted that study and found that these particles of metal were getting into downtown. This time, I had a witness with me so that there would be no question as to where and when these particles came from. The study was conducted from the top left-hand corner of Marcus Street by Alley's Jewelers and continued to the corner of Bow Street, where we collected a significant amount of microfibers just by dragging the magnet in the gutter. We proceeded around the corner to Bow Street and turned left down Cirrus Street by Annabelle's Ice Cream and all the outdoor seaside restaurants. We disturbingly found more particles there as well. We came back up the alley and turned right on Market Street and began dragging the magnet in the gutter again. The one difference we noticed this time was that we were picking up more particles in a shorter distance and it got worse the closer we got to the port. Now I know some questions that may arise like, what about micro pieces of rust that may fall off of rusty mufflers and rust spots on vehicles? I agree. But there are very few things that can create slivers of metal fragments which is caused by the cutting of metal. And if you look real close, you can see thousands and thousands of slivers. And I bet if we looked under a microscope, we'd find cut lines on these slivers. And if we were to discover one day that a business like scrap metal deposits three quarters of the micro scrap metal found on our street today, I'm sure it would be of great concern to not only the city council and concerned citizens alike, but also environmental protection agencies. Now I understand neither the state nor the scrap metal industry has the money nor the desire to discover an environmental problem which may change the face of how we look at recycling scrap metal. But now that we know it exists, it must be considered. Perhaps we could ask the University of New Hampshire to help understand what type of a problem we have and its place of origin. I also believe the council should request the results of the study being conducted by the port on scrap metal recovered from Market Street. Please, Council, I've brought you more metal collected from Market Street than should ever be found on any street. Please act now. And this is the metal that I have found. The first bag was this one I brought to you. The second bag was this one that I got up in downtown. The metals 
fibers are smaller, which is a lot easier to carry up with wind. You'll notice the difference in the two bags. It's a thicker piece than it is in this, at this other bag. You can tell the finer fibers are making it up into downtown. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. <clears throat> the next, next speaker is Joel Kopp, who would like to speak on the Scotia Prince. Uh, good evening, Council. Um, I'd like to point out that I'm also on the same subject uh, in general, as that is the Port of New Hampshire on Market Street, but uh, I'll take a slightly different tack. Uh, we know that there are still problems that are existing there and uh, questions about how it's being run, and we're, we're trying to, uh, to address all of those. But tonight I just want to talk about one specific aspect of the overall operation. Uh, it's long been uh, my contention and that of others as well that uh, the business that's going on there right now could easily be replaced with uh, other businesses uh, and perhaps more profitable than what's going on and certainly um, uh, better for the economy of Portsmouth and uh, better for the environment and the community around. Uh, as an example, I uh, distributed to all of you a, a clipping from the uh, Herald regarding the Scotia Princess, uh, which, is, which up until recently was a ferry running from Portland, Maine up to, uh, up to uh, uh, Yama. And uh, they're closing down an operation for a number of reasons, which uh, I don't want to get into now. It's fairly complicated. But nevertheless, uh, this would be a ripe time for uh, them to be approached to move on down to Portsmouth. Uh, as you can see in the article, if you have a chance to look at it later, uh, somebody's estimated that uh, uh, that boat alone produced $53 million in income for the city of Portland. Now, we are not Portland, of course. Uh, we could not probably generate the same passenger base just out of Portsmouth. But on the other, other hand, uh, we are that much closer to Boston, and there may be some, some additional traffic uh, generated from people who want to move, uh, drive, take the short drive up from, from Boston up to, uh, to Portsmouth and from there on to Nova Scotia. So uh, there is, I think, an opportunity for this boat here. And the reason I'm here tonight is to urge every one of the council members to become actively involved in the activities of the port. I know all of you are aware that uh, uh, this, this port is currently under the uh, control of the state, but we are citizens of the state as well as of Portsmouth, and you certainly have, uh, have a responsibility uh, to look out for the better interests of, of Portsmouth. I would urge, as a first step, each and every council person, please, can you spare the time to come to the next PDA meeting, which will be on May 20th uh, at 8.30, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, I believe, is the time for public session, and make your opinions known, both as council persons and as citizens of, uh, of New Hampshire and of this area, uh, expressing your opinions about the port and your hopes for the PDA to try to generate a different kind of business from what they have now. There's no reason for them to continue with the kind of business that they have now when everybody is pretty much in agreement that it could be improved on. Um, and certainly the economic benefit to this city is uh, inestimable. So thank you very much for your time. Look forward to seeing you on May 20th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. And the last speaker will be Phyllis Killam and Abel. And she will speak on the African burial plan. Yes, thank you, and good evening, council members. Uh, I want to um, go on record as supporting the recommendation of the African Burial Ground Committee. And when I think back on centuries ago, when people from Africa were brought against their will to this country and enslaved and worked to make this country what it is, I think it's very important to recognize what usually is not recognized in, in terms of uh, enslaved people's graves. This has been noted, and we should dignify their presence by keeping them where they are, the ones that have to reinter the ones that uh, have been taken out and not disturb the others and to close the lower end of Chestnut Street and have a memorial there. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes our public comment session.
Madam Mayor? Yes. I, I wish to make a motion to suspend the rules to take up B1 under John Hines. Council oh, Hines. Uh, 10 B1? D1. 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 Uh, is there a second? Second. All those in favor of suspending the rules? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Under Councillor Hines, um, and Councillor Hines, uh, as you know, is the chairman of this group. Um, how would you like to proceed? Thank you, Ma uh, Assistant Mayor. Uh, I would like to uh, briefly go over the African Burial Committee's report, uh, which we offer to the Council for acceptance. Uh, basically, we have worked for about six or seven meetings to reach the first stage of how we would do justice to those Africans who came to this country, uh, some unwillingly, uh, but made a good contribution to the early days uh, of Portsmouth. There was no recognition for their efforts at this time. However, now that the issue has arisen, responding in the way that Port the city of Portsmouth always responds, with courtesy and with an acceptable response to uh, the question. So we formed, the mayor formed the, Af the Blue Ribbon Committee on the African burial ground. And after the meetings progressed to a point where we reached unanimous consideration for the issue, we then left this issue uh, to be approved or disapproved by the city council. Uh, and the issue is how do we memorialize the efforts of these people who so long ago were never recognized for their effort. And the issue that we brought to the council was if we were to take a portion of Chestnut Street as it abuts <clears throat> court, uh, court Street, we felt that that location, which was an actual burial ground, would be an ideal place to monument what we saw uh, in the records uh, to support their efforts. Council, With that, excuse me. I was going to wonder if you wanted to make the motion. Well, oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to give a little preliminary okay. for those people who have not followed any of this effort. And at Fine. that point, I'll move a question, if you will. So uh, we are now at a stage where if the council approves of the formula that we uh, put together for the first stage of recognizing uh, the African uh, burial ground site uh, as one that should be monumented, then uh, we can go from that point to put together a plan that will be a appropriate uh, site memorial. Uh, so with that, I would now make a motion that the City Council, having read this uh, entire description, would accept the report from the African Burial Ground Committee. Second. Your Honor, may, may I ask um, Councillor Hines if he would also add to his motion that uh, uh, further to refer the proposed plan to the Traffic and Safety Committee for a hearing and report back and authorize Thank the City you. Manager to commence development of more detailed plans? Uh, yes, I'll do that. Uh, and, and if and I might, Your Honor, amend it into the report. I'd like to just explain why. Uh, certainly, the council, once they make this vote, have uh, indicated to the staff that they want to close this street and they want to accept the uh, Blue Ribbon Committee's uh, proposal. What I'd like to do is be able to go to the Traffic and Safety Committee and let them know that yes, the street will be closed. And now let's take a look at how traffic will be affected. Not that we may or may not close the street because the city council as part of the motion has said, we're gonna close this street to memorialize uh, as, as indicated by the Blue Ribbon Committee. But what I need to do is go to them and talk about how we might have certain traffic patterns change 
And so we might have to do a couple other things on a couple other streets. So may or may not, I don't know, but we want to look at that. But clearly I just wanted to understood that this is that the vote that the city council would take tonight would instruct the staff to start making plans to close Chestnut Street as proposed. And we would then go and work with the traffic and safety committee to see what those impacts would be, if there are any at all. And then also uh, we would then probably submit to the planning board uh, for the next year's capital plan funding to do this work. And we would draw off more detailed plans. So that, that's really, I want everybody to understand why I, I added that in. Well, thanks to the courtesy of the city manager, we were supplied with the uh, expertise on the uh, land side by uh, Steve Parkinson, the head of public works, and uh, a legal assistant uh, out of uh, Attorney Sullivan's office, uh, and a person who was uh, a hired employee of the city for the parking and traffic uh, part of the uh, issue that we decided. So all of those experts provided us with what we consider a very safe and sound uh, offering for the council to consider. Thank you. Um, Bill? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a point, of qu a question on this subject, on closing of a street, does it, and, and I suppose I would address the, uh, the attorney on this, can we do this without a public hearing? Can we close the street in the city of Portsmouth? prior to having a public one, hearing? One has to be careful about their language here. Uh, the word closure is uh, carefully chosen to avoid discontinuing. Uh, when you close a street, you do not discontinue the public way. You simply direct the flow of traffic in a particular direction. Okay. Um, you have, it needs to be done this way by the city council, or in fact, the city might lose title to the African burial ground. Um, <clears throat> this is being proposed properly. Um, to the extent a public hearing is required for any of this or for any of the um, issues that may arise in the future regarding this recommendation, uh, that's why the matter is being referred to traffic safety. So, so the public hearings will come up in traffic and safety? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I just wondered if the council can do this without, without having their own public hearing. So. The and council that's, that's has the question. authority to direct the traffic on Chestnut Street, okay. and the council can make the decision that it no longer wants traffic to go all the way through. Thank you. Council Whitehouse. Uh, a question to the chairman, may I? Yes. Uh, John, um, was there any serious consideration given to um, making Chestnut from state to court a one-way street? In other words, allow the flow of traffic, uh, memorialize the westerly side of Chestnut Street with curbing green grass and monument. Serious consideration was given to uh, I think about every way that we could direct traffic to and through Chestnut Street to court. Uh, uh, recognizing that Court Street, uh, at least in part by state law, would probably remain a burial ground. Uh, the only issue then was how much of Chestnut Street would be necessary to uh, have room enough to present a proper memorial. I'll save my rest of my comments later. All right. Any further discussion? Council Panalakis? I'd just like to say that we talked with uh, all the neighbors came forth there, put all their input there, and everyone that lives on that street or owns a business on that street was in favor of us doing this, and they came to the meetings to tell us that. And it's certainly a very small thing that we're doing, closing the street to memorial those people, memorialize those people. Um, and it needs to be closed so that cars do not run over it or do not park on it. Thank you. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I would have liked to have seen the street at least one lane open right through to Chestnut Street. But having sat uh, and listened to the people and the, and the decisions why this was made to do this, um, I will vote for this uh, to close off Chestnut Street. But uh, all in all, I had preferred that this street would have been remained open uh, 
and hopefully that the part that would have remained open would not be driving over any grave sites. I would not have wanted that to happen. Uh, but I guess my problem is, you know, possibly snow removal, uh, emergency vehicles getting down there. I guess that's what I was mostly concerned with. Um, there's a there's a good deal of this part of this that that uh, is going to be dedicated, and I'm glad to see this. But I would have liked to have seen that open. And I guess my concerns will come up when it goes before the traffic and safety. But that was my concern. I would have liked to have seen this for that reason. Thank you. Lana. Thank you. Any further discussion, Council Lehouse? Uh, one last little comment, Your Honor. Um, let's go back to the early 60s when uh, Chestnut Street ran all the way from Congress to Corp. Uh, the Rockingham Hotel wanted to convert their, uh, their hotel to condominium units. Uh, they came to the city to ask to block off Chestnut from Porter down to State. There was a tremendous amount of controversy in reference to this. Um, some people, such as myself, wanted to know how were the buses and the trucks make a left-hand turn coming up State Street to go down Porter. I mean, coming up Chestnut Street to go down Porter. Uh, nobody seemed to pay attention to that. And now, with the music hall having special functions for the children, the buses have to come in off Middle Street, unload, and on the side of the music hall, it's a very dangerous situation. They have to have a security guard stationed at the corner of, of Porter and Chestnut to make sure the children enter the front of the music hall. Now, here we are blocking off what we would call cut-through streets. You know, the streets going between state and court are very important, such as Fleet Street, Court Place, Church Street, all cut through streets, which, which governs the flow of traffic in this city. And I'm very concerned about the safety <laughs> issue. Now, I have a little schematics in front of me that shows five houses on Chestnut Street. Now, is a, in case of an emergency, a working fire will the ladder truck be able to make that turn coming down State Street onto Chestnut Street to to uh, fight a working fire at any one of the five houses, which are all two and a half story colonials. Some are turned into office structures, some are residential, and I'm concerned about the safety issue of that of coming into Chestnut Street with a with a with a with a ladder truck. I know the state fire marshal governs the width of a street that a ladder truck has to have to make the turn, and it's anywhere from 35 to 40 feet. Now, I'm asking the committee, blocking off half of Chestnut Street, how much width will there be from the greenery where the curbing is to the other side? Now, I bring this up early because I think that this should be known prior to going to a public hearing before the Traffic and Safety Committee. So I'd like to have a couple of questions answered that I am asking now uh, before we proceed any further on this. Please. And I'm addressing this to the city manager. Oh, all right. Try it, please, right there. I know. <laughs> um, may I, Your Honor? Yes, please. Um, certainly, the, uh, that's the reason we are going to the Traffic and Safety Committee, to get some of these questions out. But if the, I know the fire chief has uh, participated in some of the discussion. If he doesn't mind, he can come forward and, and try to answer that question, Your Honor. Certainly. Thank you. Well, that was a concern when we originally saw these plans. Um, however, we're not blocking off the end of the street with a six-story building. Um, it's not going to be uh, an area that we can't access across the lawn. Um, and in smaller streets like this, the ladder trucks tends to stay out on the main drag, uh, and we don't commit it because it becomes an exposure. Um, I think we can this, we can work around this plan. And again, it's a it's a grassy area with one monument, as I understand it. Anything that we need to do, we can access either from the other end or from court and traverse the lawn. I don't think it'll be a big problem. Thank you, Chief. Exactly. Yeah. Well, none of these houses are sprinkled. They're all older homes. 
The five homes that I'm looking at from a schematics right now, they're all older homes. None of them are sprinkled, and they could be very vulnerable to uh, a working fire in some day. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Sweeney. Thank you, Madam Assistant Mayor. You know, I really can't believe what I'm hearing. If I go back to the work session that we had, I believe the discussion offered by Councilor Whitehouse was about having the remains disinterred and being moved. And at that time, also the concern was raised about whether or not fire engines and the like could get there. And as I recall, that question was addressed at that meeting. So it seems to me at best curious that we continue to have these concerns even though the question was previously answered. In my view, if we do not close this street in the fashion suggested by the Blue Ribbon Committee appointed by the mayor, which undertook significant deliberations, then we compound the injustice previously perpetrated on the individuals who are buried there. These people, their names do not show up on coats of arms like the Wentworths and the Langdons and the like. Rather, they came here in captivity and provided their equity, if you will, to the community. We can't right that wrong, but we can certainly do something to mitigate it. And when you mitigate something, you draw upon the factors in the community that have the ability, understanding, and full historical understanding to offer their view, and that is what the Blue Ribbon Committee has done. Every standard of our society, and most societies, religious, cultural, historical, archaeological, even political, come to the same conclusion when we're talking about human remains. We generally don't move them. And in this circumstance, we're not going to do that. But I also think that the highest degree of repose that we can provide at that area shows the most respect. And certainly, we've sought to balance our community needs in that regard. And the committee has come up with an offering that is now before us. I certainly intend to vote for it. And I will not again question, for example, the fire department about the efficacy of moving vehicles in and out of there when we've previously been told that it's not a problem. Thank you. Council Whitehouse. Yes, just one last comment. In reference to some of the comments that uh, Councilman Ferrini has made, uh, there was an amounting that I didn't observe. Every single remains that was removed from that uh, historical grave site. I was there sometimes two to three hours during the day. The majority of the graves are located westerly of the center strip of Chestnut Street. In fact, there are still remains showing extruding underneath the sidewalk down six or eight feet. The sidewalk on the westerly side of Chestnut Street. So that's why I'm saying the memorial should be on the westerly side of Chestnut Street and a continuous one-way street through from state to court. Thank you. Councilor Hines. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. We on this council sat, not on the council, the committee sat and listened to the state person who is responsible for uh, any burial site in the state. And we were instructed by him that in almost every case, if a burial site was disturbed, then that site should be uh, replanted the way it was and it should not be disturbed. And as a addition to that, when a recommendation was made that maybe we could move some of the burial uh, bodies, uh, he gave us uh, a number to work with, assuming that there are X number of bodies buried in that site, the cost was about $10,000 per body to move them. Now money, as far as I'm concerned and as far as the committee is concerned, uh, is not going to be a deterrent to doing honor to these people who up till this time, after 200 years or more, were not recognized. However, I think that what we're asking, and it's subject to amendment at any time, 
uh, we're asking that we can continue using the plan that was put together by parking and traffic, by city uh, public works, by the uh, office of uh, Bob Sullivan, uh, and in general agreement with a great number of people who attended all of these meetings and understood what was going on, so that we come here tonight with what we feel is the most careful design not to disrupt traffic and not to create anything but a good plan for doing what we set out to do, what the Mayor's Blue Ribbon Committee set out to do, is to do justice to this site. Thank you. Are you ready for all oh, Your Honor, just, I want to move the question. Thank you. Ready for the vote? Yeah. Your Honor, I'll be uh, making my views known. I'll be voting for this, but I'll be making my views known before traffic and safety. That's, that would be the proper place to proceed. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes. You can go home, ladies. <laughs> and I think we're now back to approval of grants and donations. Your Honor, I move the um, City Council approve and accept donations to the new library building fund. Uh, we have three of them this evening. Uh, one from Walter F. and Carmen A. Lang for $50. One from Raymond Bowles in memory of his mother, Ella Shannon Bowles, for $500. And an anonymous contribution for $500. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Considerations of resolutions and ordinances. First reading of the ordinance amending Chapter 6, Article 7, the dog ordinance be deleted in its entirety and replaced with the new sections 6.701 to 6.715. Chapter 8, Article 2, Section 8.202D, Dogs in Parks. Chapter 9, Article 4, Removal of dog excrement deleted in its entirety. Your Honor. Yes. I move to pass first reading of amended ordinance as submitted and hold a public hearing and second reading at the May 2nd, 2005 City Council meeting. Second. Any discussion? Council Mayor? I'd yeah. rather defer to Council Marchand, who was. Council Marchand. Well, thank you. I'll be brief. Thank you. Um, uh, as a member of the committee, I'm uh, enthusiastic about uh, moving this forward, and I think this will do a lot to improve both in uh, principle and in practicality the ability to apply uh, ordinances that are largely already on the books, but this will do it in a much more effective way. One thing I will reiterate is that I would uh, very much like to see at some period certain, whether it's six months or a year, uh, some review, uh, perhaps involving the animal control officer and or a member of the police department as whatever we would find appropriate to get some idea about um, uh, enforcement uh, data re uh, relating to enforcement uh, moving forward to make sure that some of the goals that were expressed repeatedly by both the public and committee members about some of the goals of the, this uh, cleaning up of the ordinance, that these goals are actually uh, being met. But I think this is going to be a great step towards achieving the goals we talked about. Any further discussion? Uh, Council Reynolds? Yes, thank you, Ron. Just one question to the, the, to the members of the committee on the nuisance animals and one, uh, molesta harasses passerby domestic animals or passing vehicles in the public way. If I'm passing somebody's house with my dog and, and a dog is, even though it's tied or has a fence and it's viciously trying to get, that doesn't apply to that, does it? No, no. It applies to dogs barking for 30, 40 minutes at a time behind your house. Or and in somebody uh, else's backyard or something like or that. Or you're allowing your dog to go on somebody else's land to do their business. And it applies to nuisances such as when you put nuisances in it. We're trying to also see if we can get to the exotic animals such as pythons or tigers or anything mm -hmm. they might be having in their buildings. <laughs> okay, thank you. You definitely want to get those tigers. <laughs> <laughs> Council Reynolds. Uh, thank you, Assistant Mayor. Um, my my um, 
remarks here. I'll, first of all, I want to I want to say that um, I want to commend the the work of the uh, of the dog committee and appreciate the uh, ob the obvious uh, hard work that they did in, in crafting what I think is a very comprehensive and uh, well well considered uh, new ordinance that's going to serve the city very well. I just have one remark, and I'm not um, I'm not quite prepared to uh, offer an amendment, a proposed amendment at this uh, this evening, but I think what I'm going to do is, is just talk perhaps with a couple of the members of the dog committee and at second reading may may propose an amendment. And, and this is the, the topic. It actually concerns uh, that same definition, uh, section 6.702 on nuisance animals, specifically um, under the enumeration of uh, the definition of nuisance animals, number six, where the definition currently says barks, whines, or howls, or cries in an excessive continuous fashion to disturb the peace. A continuous fashion means more than 30 minutes. I happen to have some personal experience with uh, circumstances where it, it is not necessarily the duration of the, of the time, but rather the time of day that such a barking, uh, whining, howling um, occurs. And it doesn't really matter whether it actually takes place for 30 minutes or not, so much as it takes place um, at 6.30 on a Sunday morning when someone has let their dog out into the backyard and, uh, you know, unattended so that it can take care of its business. And then another dog walker comes along with, with their dog on the street, and the dog in the yard runs to the fence and the two proceed to bark at each other, you know, for a period of 30 seconds or a minute, but it's at 6.30 in the morning and, and, you know, the peace is disturbed and everyone in the neighborhood has woken up. Um, and it seems to me that, that the issue is, you know, the unattended dog in the yard that is, a, that is uh, at a time that's so early in the morning as I think people have a right to expect peace and quiet, particularly on weekends when that's a chance when people have, you know, to sleep in a little bit. So. You can't legislate, you know, consideration among neighbors, but you can legislate what kind of behavior is allowed. And so I, I want to, um, as I said, probably discuss this with a couple members of the of the um, dog committee and, and perhaps offer an amendment to modify the, uh, to add that, that uh, time of day consideration when dogs may be allowed to, uh, you know, be unattended and may cause this barking uh, nuisance uh, during certain times of day. I think that you would classify that, they would classify that as a nuisance if you called, if it happened every Sunday morning for two or three weeks. That that, whether it backed only five minutes or three minutes, it would classify as a nuisance. Well, I think I'm, what I'm saying is I can, I think it, many people would indeed consider it a nuisance, but I think that if you read the definition, um, you know, it would be said, well, that doesn't doesn't meet the definition of the of the ordinance, so therefore it's shame, but we can't help you. So that's that's just what I'm trying to address here. Okay. Well, Council, yeah, thank you, Ron. I, I I'm not sure if this is the fact, but we do have a noise ordinance, I believe, that covers the 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 the, uh, the night hours, and I think that might come under the noise ordinance, wouldn't it? Uh, could I go to the city attorney uh, question that? Barking at that time of the morning, <clears throat> it may well. It, uh, a dog which barks uh, late at night might well be prosecutable, or the owner prosecutable under the noise ordinance. A big yes. Um, Council Marshall. Uh, thank you. Actually, two points. One is exactly what Bill just said. I uh, I would suspect that uh, the the timing uh, would probably be covered uh, by existing ordinance. Although I would want confirmation. It sounds like that would be the case. And the second is uh, something that permeates all of the discussion we had uh, is discretion. And that whether we're talking about um, uh, law enforcement, animal control, that discretion is a big part of this. That uh, what we hope is it, not only are we uh, codifying uh, some things that are vague at points or almost contradictory, the way that different parts of the ordinance is currently written, uh, but we also want to encourage common sense to be a big part of how this is enforced. And this is, again, going back to being able to go back in six months or a year and take a look at uh, how was this enforced? Uh, was common sense used by looking at some of the information regarding activity that relates to these uh, ordinances that we're proposing? So I think uh, uh, discretion and common sense are two of the 
important goals that we hope come out of this. Okay. Council Whitehouse. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to suggest if this motion passes that we keep the agenda very brief at our May 2nd meeting. If uh, you recall at our last uh, meeting in reference to a dog ordinance, we filled this council chambers with over 100 people, a lot of speakers. So I suggest that uh, try to keep the agenda very brief next time. Thank you. Any further discussion? The motion is to pass. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. The next is the third and final reading, reading of ordinance amending Chapter 7, Article 3, Section 7.330. No parking, subsection A, Islington Street, southerly side from Essex, Essex Avenue to a point 180 feet westerly. Your Honor? Yes. Move to pass third and final reading. Second. Of the amended ordinance as submitted. Oh, sorry. Okay, it's moved and second. seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? <laughs> uh, it may be my imagination, but it seems to me I've been seeing more dogs on leashes now since this has been in the works than I have ever seen before. Uh, right now we're down to uh, a letter from attorney Alex McAachran, Shannon and McAachran Professional Association. A request for amendment, amendment to zoning ordinance to permit financial institutions in the office research zone. Your Honor? Yes. I move to recommend the City Council refer this matter to the Planning Board for a report back. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yeah, I, I, I concur with the motion to refer to the uh, Planning Board. I would just ask that we um, ensure that the Planning Board considers. Um, as a, as a, they probably would anyway, but I want to note it here publicly that um, including uh, financial institutions um, to me usually means a bank, and a bank usually means a drive-through, and there's actually an added, uh, or I say often means a, a drive-through facility, and that would add a, uh, have a distinctly different um, flavor than the type of um, business that I think you would usually see in an office research zone. So. Bill noted. Yes, Council. I'll just uh, say that uh, as the representative to the Planning Board, I appreciate Council Reynolds' uh, commentary. There has been discussion previously in that regard, and I'm sure that will be very much part of the discussion, and I appreciate you pointing it out. Thank you. Any further discussion? The motion is to refer to the Planning Board. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> it passes. Next is a letter from Robert Clements, New Hampshire National Guard, requesting permission to hold a Military Appreciation Day parade on Saturday, August 6, 2005 at 2 p.m. Your Honor? Yes. I move that we move to the city manager with power. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Next item. Be under the city manager. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a couple items that I'd like to review with you. Uh, the first being a report back from uh, the planning board. Rezoning of properties located off Morona Road from uh, industrial to general business. Uh, as you recall, at the February 14th city council meeting, the council referred the attached request from attorney Malcolm McNeil on behalf of this client, Michael's Realty Trust, to rezone properties located off of Morona Road from industrial to general business to the planning board for report back. I've attached a memorandum from David Holden, the planning director, regarding the planning board's recommendation. The planning board at its March 17th meeting recommend this re request be granted and further that this request is in conformance with the new master plan. And I've attached a map that shows you, if you take a look at that map, you'll see that uh, the property in question, uh, you see the gray area that's kind of juts into that area of general business that is uh, outlined in yellow, and you can see that it would then just make that entire area general business. So uh, the planning board is recommending that the city council accept their, uh, the rezoning of the property off of Morona Road from industrial to general business. 
And if the council agrees with this, I would ask that you authorize the city attorney to draft an ordinance amendment that would schedule this zone change for first reading at your May 2nd meeting. So I'll move, Your Honor. I think you, you want to move. Want it. Uh, is there a I'll, I'll, I'll move with the recommendation of the city manager. All right, second. Second. Council Your Honor, a councilor should, on an important issue like this, be making the motion, and it should be stated as presented in front of us. Certainly. Uh, city manager. I, I oh, yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with you. I, I was just finishing my report, and as part of that is to try to explain where I think no. It should go. I mean, if you prefer me to say silent during my oh, no. You know, no, report, no, then I, I will do the so. The motion should be read because this is an important issue. It should be part of the record, and it should be read. Certainly, every council member should make the motion. I agree with you 100%. Why don't we have Council of St. Laurent read the motion? Okay. Thank you, Ron. I will. Your Honor. Gladly. I, I think uh, for the, inter for the uh, what's going on right now, is contrary to what this council has done with these issues as long as the 16 years I've been on this council. There's no need when a councilor says to move the question as reported, whether it's a city manager or a councilor or whatever, you have recorded his message and you can approve or disapprove of it without any further action by the council. Your Honor, I'll gladly read the motion again. All right, go ahead. I recommend the City Council to move to accept the Planning Board's recommendation to rezone properties off Morona Road from industrial to general business and authorize the City Attorney to draft an ordinance amendment that would schedule this zoning change for the first reading at the May 2nd City Council meeting. It's already been a second. Okay. Is there a discussion on this? If not, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Your Honor. The next item deals with the acceptance of the draft hazardous mitigation plan. I'd ask, as I give you an introduction to this, I'd ask the fire chief to come forward. Um, I've, been, I've attached uh, in your packet a copy of the city's draft hazardous mitigation plan for 2005 which is a joint effort between the Fire Department, Police Department, Department of Public Works, and the Rockingham County Planning Commission. This document uh, is similar to our All Hazards Operational Plan and must be in place and approved by the Federal Emergency Management Agency in order for the city to receive natural disaster relief funds from the federal governments. Communities that do not have these plans will not be eligible for the federal assistance. Uh, Portsmouth is one of only a few communities in the state that have uh, updated and completed this task to date. Uh, the City Council needs to accept this draft hazardous mitigation plan before we can send it on to FEMA for their approval. And once FEMA has approved the plan, uh, then it comes back and we will schedule a public hearing with the City Council and that's required by, by federal law. But I'd like to have the Chief just briefly outline what this plan is all about and uh, then ask for a motion if that's appropriate, Your Honor. Certainly. Thank you. Members of the City Council. Uh, all of what the city manager said is correct. It's all in my notes. Um, the Portsmouth Hazard Mitigation Plan uh, was compiled to assist the city of Portsmouth reducing and mitigating future losses from natural hazard events. Uh, the plan was developed by the Rockingham Planning Commission and participants from the city of Portsmouth um, and contains the tools necessary to identify specific hazards and aspects of existing and future mitigation efforts. Uh, following natural hazards are addressed, flooding, hurricanes, severe winter weather, wildfire and, and conflagration, earthquakes, coastal storms, it also includes a list of critical infrastructure facilities, including municipal facilities, communication facilities, fire station, law enforcement, schools, shelters, evacuation routes, and vulnerable populations. Uh, just like the emergency operations plan, the hazard mitigation plan has to be in place in order for us to get FEMA grants or to apply for post-disaster uh, funds. It also helps us do projects such as identifying flood zones, uh, perhaps getting federal dollars to move structures out of the flood zone if that needs to happen, uh, replacing problem culverts, um, buying generators for uh, emergency shelters, that type of thing. Um, these plans have to be in place uh, to comply with federal law. So this is a draft for you. Uh, once we send it to FEMA for their approval, it'll come back. We'll have to have a public hearing and we'll send the final uh, version. We will have this as a hazard mitigation plan. Uh, it can be a standalone document, but I'll recommend to the city manager who's the emergency management director for the city that it become an a annex to the emergency operations plan. Thank you. Any questions from councilors? Uh, Is there a motion on the floor, Your Honor? Not yet. May I make the motion? Certainly. Thank you. 
Move to accept the draft hazardous um, mitigation plan for 2005 as submitted and send to FEMA for approval. There's a second. 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 Gee, there's a second. Discussion on this. All right. Discussion. Actually, the, the timing, uh, to be very brief, uh, we have the chief here, and because the subject matter happens to be very relevant, uh, as you may know, I've been working with some of these foreign delegations. We had one here this week from the country of Latvia, uh, very high ranking, many dealing. We have uh, FEMA officials up from Washington uh, and uh, Homeland Security related officials, as well as their equivalents, in this case from Latvia. Uh, they took a tour of the fire uh, department on Court Street this morning. Uh, we very much appreciate the opportunity. Uh, they had a, they, I think they got a lot of great dialogue out of it, learned some great things, and, uh, and I think that uh, this is actually some of the information that we would like to give to them before they go back to, to give them an idea of how we handle this sort of thing at the local level, and I think it's a great document from what I've seen. So thank uh, you. I'll fully support it. Council St. Uh, Your Honor, thank you. Um, I'm assuming, uh, according to this, I, I see we're going to be having a public hearing on this after it's accepted by FEMA. Um, Correct. Once again, I'm going to ask, unless, yeah, please, unless please. there's any, if there are any changes, could you just don't give us the page the changes on? I don't know if we can keep a draft like this, but I don't think we need to get another packet like this. No, Your Honor, if I might, that's why we have the clip there, so you can take it with you. Right, no, but I'm saying we don't <laughs> want another. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm not. Like <laughs> Like I said, unless a page change in here, the, the, the theme of my change. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any further discussion? Council Reynolds? Okay. Are we ready for a vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No, thank you, Chief. The next item, uh, Your Honor, is a proposed license agreement uh, with uh, Coast. Uh, if you remember, we, we talked about expanding our service uh, to cover Portsmouth Regional Hospital. I know that came up <clears throat> about a year ago as we made some adjustments to the route. In order to facilitate this route change, Coast has entered into an agreement with the owner of 400 Route 1 Bypass, the Frank Jones property, to permit Coast buses traveling from Borthwick Avenue over the Frank Jones Center property to reach Kate Street. The agreement also permits Coast to install an electric gate to allow it exit from Frank Jones Center property to Kate Street. In order to power the gate, Coast requires permission from the city to allow PSNH to run power from one of its poles across 22 feet of city-owned property to the gate. And attached uh, is a representation showing the approximate location of the gate, which would allow entry onto Kate Street. I've also attached a sketch showing the electrical drop from the pole to the new gate. Uh, this would only be a license uh, benefit of Coast. The license would terminate if Coast bus route is no longer needed through the property. May I get a motion on this matter, Your Honor? Uh, someone motion? Your Honor, I uh, move that the City Council authorize the City Manager to enter into a license agreement with Coast for the purposes of providing electricity to the so described electric gate. Second. Thank you. Discussion. Council Pamela. I will be voting against this because I have a problem. It took them a year to decide to go to Portsmouth Hospital, and they can go up Gate Street just like every other citizen in this town has to do because those people got all they could out of the city and the state, and then they closed the street. When they first got them lights in there, you used to be able to go to and from to Kate Street. Then all of a sudden they got up in arms over something, and they closed it off to the people, and I don't believe it. Any bus should be allowed to do that, even with a gate, or that um, that if the citizens can't go across it, then Coast Bus can go across it. And the only reason that Coast Bus has decided to go to the regional hospital is they found a gimmick again. I'd like to have the city manager. Uh, well, I think one of the things that really is important here is the time factor because of the way the route is configured. Uh, this allows us to stay on schedule with regards to that, that time factor. Uh, with regards to allowing the public going through, um, you know, clearly this is something that we want to start exploring and continue to explore. If we don't start in one way, um, we'll, we'll never get through the first step. I would say, Councillor, that um, the reason that we are using this gate is, again, to, to keep on schedule. We have, we have very tight time schedules on the bus route. So, I think that's really the purpose, and hopefully over time, if, if things work out, we might be able to open up that to the public, uh, but depending on uh, 
uh, negotiations is private property. Thank you. Your Honor. Council Smith uh, Thank you, Ron. Uh, I think we're going to be voting to have Coast go to the hospital bus. Are the trolley one of them? That, that's, this is, this is what this would allow this. Uh, I, the other thing I have a problem with is being private property. Do we, is there any liability problem? That would be Coast. We are that not. Would be with Coast. With oh. Coast, yeah. Okay, thank you. Council Whitehouse? Yeah, just one question, uh, John. Sure. Have we got tentative agreement to go across the private property coming out of Monroe Road, going across Route 1 into private property? Is there a. A, a Morona Road? No, this is uh, uh, Bosswick Avenue. Bosswick Avenue, going yes. across Route 1, into that private property. Is there a kind of a tentative agreement? I believe so. Uh, yeah. Bob? I'm sorry, I was actually reading something up from the question. Is the, there... the question was relative to uh, Coast and their agreement with uh, yeah. uh, do we have an agreement in place in principle? Yes. Okay, good. I think it's a good move. Uh, Councilor Hines? Thank you, Your Honor. Well, first of all, there is a light there coming out of that site, uh, and, and I think that might be safe enough to cross. But I'll tell you, it's a lot safer than coming up Kate Street with two difficult turns and an entry into Cottage Street that risks getting hit because traffic is fairly heavy on that road. Uh, so to put a bus through two difficult turns and a difficult entrance into Cottage to make a left turn to then get there, uh, I think this is a very good plan to allow them to go straight through. Any further discussion? All we have a roll call. Yeah. Yes, roll call. Councilor Farini? Yes. Council Marchand? Yes. Council Tenelaka? No. Councilor Hines? Yes. Councilor Reynolds? Yes. Council Whitehouse? Yes. Council of St. Laurent? Yes. Assistant Mayor Grasso? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Your Honor. The, that's, that's all I have under action items, but I just want to draw to your attention some informational items, just that the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day will be scheduled for May 7th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the Department of Public Works, and we're doing this again with uh, the towns of Greenland and Newington at the uh, Public Works facility on 680 Pebbly Hill Road. There will be a legislative delegation meeting on Friday at 9 a.m. in Conference Room A. And there will be a uh, work, uh, excuse me, there will be a uh, streetscape improvement uh, discussion and uh, uh, review with uh, Crescent Way residents regarding streetscape improvements to begin the week of uh, April 18th. And uh, that's all I have, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Councilor Long? Yes, uh, I have a question or two for the uh, city manager. Yes, uh, on the informational items, uh, is this a time for people to be bringing in their gasoline, John? You know, the old gasoline that they've got from... They should be from bringing the... any hazardous waste, which would include gasoline. Okay. Anything that they think is hazardous, because there will be specialists at the site. If it is not hazardous, then it will be disposed of in a traditional manner. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is hazardous, then they will dispose of it appropriately. Well, so if people have any question, right. bring it down. Uh, another question. Um, I, I understand that the uh, governor has declared the state of an emergency and snow emergency disaster for the state of New Hampshire. Has that happened? And he's, can we go after some funds for that? That's, uh, that's actually declared by the president um, and uh, be, through an application of the governor. And there are three dates in January, I believe, that were applied for by the, the governor and the, and the president has declared those three days as emergencies. And there will be federal money available. The Public Works Department attended a, a briefing on that last week. Uh, as we have in the past, we'll receive 75% of the costs associated with those three days, and 25% will be local. Thank you, Ron. And I'd like to know what we get. Certainly, I'll let you know. I mean, I always have in the past. I, I think the last large snowstorm where it was declared, I gave you that information, and right. certainly we'll get it again. Thank but you. it may not be for a while because it right. goes through a long process. Thank you. Under the mayor, we have the appointment to the cable commission of, uh, of we have a consideration, I'm sorry, of the, to the cable commission of John Gregg, and that will be voted on next time. We have also for consideration the uh, 
Donald Green to the Conservation Commission, which I believe is a, a renewal. We will be voting on Stephen Bird for the uh, PEDLP Review Committee. So move, Your Honor. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Also, um, under the mayor, the uh, city manager has already taken care of the uh, hazardous waste and the legislative meeting. Also, um, tomorrow at, um, let's see, I guess I have the wrong uh, On Tomorrow at uh, 3 o'clock, there will be, um, Pro Portsmouth will be unveiling the um, the new uh, logo for the uh, Children's Museum. Children's and, Day. Children's Day. <laughs> and also um, on um, Saturday, April 25th, there will be the rolling rally for the Kittery uh, Portsmouth uh, Naval Shipyard Day. And um, anyone that available is welcome to attend. Uh, Portsmouth will be meeting at um, uh, noon at Prescott Park, and they will be walking across the bridge to Kittery. So anyone uh, from the council is invited to participate, and anyone in the city is invited. Could you give those dates and times? Um, uh, that will be to be at Prescott Park, from Prescott Park at noontime on Saturday. Saturday. And they'll be walking from there to across the bridge uh, to Kittery. And the people on the main side will be doing, will be coming to us also. And at 1 o'clock, we are due to be at gate 1 for the rally. Under uh, my name, I have the request to reschedule the April 19th budget work session. Um, it's, it will be a, the evening that the futures dinner will be, have, will be uh, scheduled. And in the past, I know the mayor and I and the city Your Honor, you said, you said April. You mean May. I'm sorry. May 19th. Um, yes. And in the past, that the, the mayor and um, the several councilors and then the city manager have tried to attend that, that dinner to honor the children that are, are chosen to participate in the Futures Program. So it's, um, while we haven't gotten our invitation yet, I do know that's the date. So I'm asking that the council approve a um, change on that day. Your Honor, um, may I uh, suggest a date? Um, we don't have, and I'll just make sure Kelly agrees, we don't have any council meetings on May 23rd, which is a Monday. That's correct. So we could move that from May 19th to May 23rd. We could do it at the same time at 6.30, if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, 6.30? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Council if I could, uh, and again, file this under, not, don't want to be selfish about it, so it may be 8 to 1. Uh, my wife is due with her second child on June 5th, <laughs> and anytime we start getting close to late May, uh, just purely selfishly, anything that gets us further away from June 5th makes me feel better. But, you know, if it happens, it's going to happen anyway. So uh, I don't want to stop it. If, if everybody else can do that date, that's, I may, I plan on being there, but Somebody else may have something to do. Come and bring it. Put your phone on. That's it. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So May 23rd. Uh, May 23rd. And um, we've taken care of Councilor Hines' uh, report. So we're down to miscellaneous or unfinished business. Our favorite. Uh, yeah, Your Honor. Yes, Council Whitehouse. Yes. Uh, under the public comment session, there was one um, resident talked about the uh, the ferry that runs out of uh, Portland. I guess it is. Yes, it's Scotia Prince. Scotia Prince, and, and possibly uh, the uh, Port Authority or uh, the PT, PDA could uh, uh, look into this and and. Maybe reschedule that uh, ferry to uh, come into Portsmouth temporarily until something else is found. Uh, can the city manager comment on this? Certainly, Your Honor. Um, they have, in my understanding, they have not been approached by the Scotia Prince yet, but what I could do is write a letter to the PDA director asking 
or at least letting them know that the city council is very interested in this and would be supportive uh, of something of this nature. Do we need that in the form of a motion? No, I can do it if you'd oh, like me to. Request? Is that okay? Yes, agreeable okay. to me. Anything else under unfinished business? I move we adjourn, Your Honor. Second. All right. Wow. Joanne, I won't be at the meeting on Wednesday because we have a project.